Well, I'm assuming if you're watching this video that you are curious about 3D, trying to figure out how to get into the 3D world, or have seen some really cool stuff and uh, want to understand more about how it's done. Um, basically, I wanted to make a tutorial for people that are trying to get up and running with Cinema 4D. Um, currently, we're using um, R20. <clears throat> and um, I apologize, I don't have R, uh, or I'm sorry, S22 yet. Um, so I'm going to basically be getting you up to speed with R20 at the moment. Um, a lot of things are similar. Um, there's some subtle differences. I'm going to end up doing a tutorial uh, on S22 once I get it, but <clears throat> hasn't happened yet. So I've been wanting to make a, a YouTube video for a long time now and just haven't gotten around to it because I'm not really sure why. Maybe it's just scared to click that record button, but that happened about 24 seconds ago. So either way, my name's Sean Heilman, and I'm going to help you uh, hopefully get warmed up to Cinema 4D. And uh, if you have any questions or anything that you want to know, um, I've been using this software for 15 years now, <clears throat> and I'm in love with it, and it's been a great relationship. Uh, the interface can be kind of confusing. Um, I think it's a probably the most intuitive uh, 3D software out there um, to learn from what I've seen between Maya and 3ds Max and all that good stuff. Um, this definitely is the easiest to understand and the easiest to pick up, in my opinion. <clears throat> I'm not a Maya user. I'm not a 3DS Max user, but I have been in them. And I'm lost, uh, severely confused whenever I'm in there. So um, I'm hoping to bring a... Uh, I'm hoping within... I'm not really sure how long I'm going to let this run, but I'm um, hoping I can uh, basically make this a little simpler for uh, anybody looking to, uh, yeah, play in 3D. So let's get started. Um, for starters... So this is Cinema 40 R20. So basically, if you really wanted to come in here and just get creating, you're pretty much going to go right for this. This is your object manager. Click and hold down any of these uh, menus that have the little triangles in the corners, all of them splines. You click and hold down, and it opens up some options, and you can make any object in here. Let's just go with a platonic for now. <clears throat> so every object in this menu is a parametric object, which basically means that it comes with a set of options and you can edit it. So this, uh, you know, it'd probably be easier to start with a cube. It's a little confusing. Let's just go with a cube. So you want a cube, all you gotta do is click it once and it'll come in with a cube. So basically, for starters, to get up and running, your option key, if you hold down your option key and click, on the object it's going to rotate you around the point you clicked on so in your environment out here if you click here and hold down never mind one of the settings is wrong <clears throat> either way so important hotkeys to know getting started is you hold down number one and it's going to give you the ability to move your position you can do the exact same thing by clicking and holding down on this and then just dragging up and down, left and right. <clears throat> Same exact thing, but you'll get used to having your hands over the keyboard for your hotkeys. Holding down one moves around. Holding down two is zooms in and out. Same as this. You can just click and hold down this and in and out. Use it. Same thing with rotation. Click and hold down and you're rotating. Hold down three, click and hold down, and you're rotating. Either one. So you got one move your position two scale in and out zoom in and out three rotate good to go okay so again back to this is a parametric object so parametric objects are when you click on this it's going to give you a set of options down here so you we're going to go up here sorry if this gets a little confusing <clears throat> your display menu here this is your viewport so right now we're viewing the perspective view of the scene and this object is in our scene and this panel here is called your object manager all your objects will be put in your objects manager so in your viewport if you click on display you can click on ground shading with lines and now you can't really tell anything's really been done but now that if you go over here to your parametric object and its attribute this is your attribute menu 
you can bump up its segments and add basically segments to your object. So now we have here just to show you the difference before that's all you see if you're in your normal your no, your normal garage shading. You go into your garage shading lines. It's going to show you your segments. So now if you wanted to you can come up here. Right now this is still a parametric object. You cannot edit the geometry of this object at all. Well, you can kind of, but that's a deeper tutorial later on. Let's just get up and running with the basics. Uh, another thing with your parametric object when you bring it in here, as long as you have your cube selected, you can grab these little knobs, these little points, and scale your object in different directions. Up, down, same with the arrows. If you click on this arrow, you can move on your x-axis. Click this one on your z-axis. Click on this one on your y-axis. Another tip, if you click on this little triangle guy here, it's going to combine your x and your z. So you can grab this right here as long as it highlights, and it's only going to move it on the x and the z axis. And that goes the same for your x and y. I'm only going to move it on the x and y. And same with your y and z. So <clears throat> I'm going to come back down here. This is your coordinate manager. Right now we've been moving this thing around. If you notice, these numbers down here for the position keep changing because that's its position in this space, in this, in this environment. So just to make sure we're in the center here, I'm going to zero out, zero, tab, zero, tab, zero, tab, and then hit enter. And it's going to put that perfectly in the center of this environment. So right now we're on perspective view. Um, it's really important to understand this. Right now we're looking at a perspective view of this object in this scene. Uh, you're going to run into a lot of times where you're going to need to see this from a lot of different angles. So if you come up here, this little square box up here, you can enter into your four perspective modes. You're going to see it from the top, from the front, and from the right. And again, you can still do the same thing. If you move this guy on its x-axis, you're going to see it. Z-axis, you're going to see it. And y-axis, you're going to see it. I'm going to command Z back to center. And same with these guys. Everything's interactive. These are all live. So <clears throat> now we have this parametric cube with 5x5x5 five by five by five segments. And we want to edit the geometry. So if you click this guy right here, or notice that when you hover over these, by the way, these little windows pop up, these little menus. Uh, Cinema 4D is incredible for their help, their help menus. They uh, have done a better job than any software I've ever, ever used in my life. I mean, I've been in the Adobe package for 15 years, and I've never seen anything as powerful as Maxon has done in their help menus, which, by the way, if you wanted to just go in and get a grip on anything, really, you can just go up to help and click it, and here you've got a smorgasbord of information. And it's all very detailed and explains things very, 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 very well. So in a great way of taking advantage of this help menu, but not needing to go in there and dig through everything that's there. If you wanted, you can come over here, right click, and pretty much most things in this software, you right click, if you go to the very bottom, here's a show help. And you click on show help and it's going to show you help on the object you're curious about so here we got cube object you're getting help out the cube so okay so for the basics we have here are again objects that you can create right from the start pretty much most of these there's some more but just to not over complicate things which i feel like i already kind of do just because i kind of forget what it's like to not ever have been in this software so please I apologize if I'm kind of all over the place because I'm used to flying all over the software really fast so um, yeah it's a bit of a challenge to back it up and just go back to uh, the basics but I really want to see you guys out there get a grip on the software and once you get past that learning curve it gets so fun I mean you'll have so much you'll enjoy using this program so much it's such a good time 
Um, I can't believe they pay people to do this. Um, the whole, you know, do what you love, love what you do. Um, cheers to being able to make a career out of loving doing something this much because this is like candy land here. So, uh, and this is nothing. It gets uh, way more fun. <clears throat> so anyway, here are your objects. There's a create menu up here where you can come up here and create pretty much most of what's in that menu over there. There's some other things in here, but again, that's another tutorial. This is just to warm you guys up and help you start creating a scene that initiates some creativity and shows you that pretty much anybody can get in here and start having fun with this uh, this software relatively quickly. Um, so yeah, anyway, moving on. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in here. Um, I wouldn't recommend just opening the program and diving into any of this because it gets really confusing. So let's just start with the cube. So, okay, here's your cube. It's still a parametric object, which means you can adjust the settings for its segments and all that good stuff. Um, you can hit let and that rounds corners. If you wanted to, you can grab these handles in here and round corners, flay the edges, beautiful. So now that we have this object, this button up here, I'm gonna hover, it's called make it edible. Any parametric object you have, eventually you're gonna probably make it edible if you're getting into more intense modeling. Um, so I'm gonna make this edible. Once you do that, you can't go back. So let me command Z, back out of that. So what I recommend is making a copy of this. If you were working on some model and you can come up here, same menu, create a null, and this basically acts like a container. Um, kind of like layers in, in a, or I'm sorry, uh, yeah, folders in Photoshop. You can throw uh, one of these into the null object, spin it shut, and then if you hold down option, these two guys here, traffic lights, you can just turn these off by clicking twice and holding down option at the same time. I'll explain these later. But if they're both red, that means nothing inside of there will be in a render or seen in this viewport. So if I move this, you'll see that you can't see anything. But if I turn these back to gray, there it is. So I'm hiding that. So we always have an original to go back to, um, just in case we do something stupid to this and wanted to go back. OK, so now we're going to go up here and click Editable. Shortcut is Command-C, as you can see right there in that flyout menu. Command-C makes it editable. Now we can come down here, and here is your polygon tool. So if you click on that, you're going to get an interactive experience with your cube. So if you come up here, this is your selection tool. You have a, a couple of these, live selection. Basically, you are, well, what it says, command see how that, you are live selecting. So whatever you paint on is going to select that geometry because you're on the geometry selection tool, or the polygon tool, I'm sorry. Um, Here's your edge tool and here's your points tool. So if you're on your edge tool and you have your selection, you're gonna select edges. If you're on your points tool and you're on your live selection, you're gonna select points. So basically if you select them, just like the tool before, you can push and pull and good stuff. So anyway, before this tutorial turns into a 10 hour tutorial, which I could talk for days about this, uh, I'm trying to keep it simple. So let me go back and get rid of this. This is how you can come in here and play with geometry with any object after making it editable using your polygons, edges, or points. So I'm going to delete this and go back to just that simple cube and get rid of that too. So the cube down here, <clears throat> we have your materials manager. So if you come down here and you double click right in this manager, or you can go to create, some of this stuff is going to be in yours because I use Arnold and some other uh, renders. So um, I apologize if anything doesn't look exactly like yours when you uh, download it for the first time. But uh, basically hitting new material, you're going to get the exact same thing as double clicking here in the gray. So I'm just going to delete these guys and open this up. So here are your material attributes. Up here is your basic color. You can come in here and adjust your color. Let's make it blue. And if you wanted to make it luminate with luminance, you can turn that on and adjust these settings. We're going to keep this super basic because I will start talking too deep about some of these. Transparency obviously makes it clear. You lower it, it's it less more opaque, more transparent when you fill it. You turn that on. That's fun to play with. Reflectance is what it sounds. It makes it reflect. 
and if you wanted to apply material to this you can just grab this drag it up here and drop it I'm gonna command Z to get out of that and show you another way you can pull this from here up to here and drop it right on your cube another good tip if you wanted to let's say for example we're gonna make this editable again here I go all over the place I apologize command C or click make editable I'm gonna command C because I'm a hot key freak um, select a couple of these and if you created a new material and drag that onto here it's going to assign it to just that area where you have it selected again this is getting deeper than I want to for my first tutorial about this ever but it creates a thing called a selection tag which assigns this material to only this portion of the object and that's a very powerful we're gonna get deeper into that later um, <clears throat> again I'm not trying to get too crazy uh, these menus up here again with the uh, move rotate and scale or zoom uh, if you click this it's gonna make this full screen again if you click it again it's gonna go back into four click it again back to full screen generally I work in here the most unless I'm doing some uh, intense modeling or anything um, so yeah so in here we have again here we have our objects here we have splines which that's another tutorial basically these are paths that you can do a lot of really cool things with uh, in here um, basically if you were in your top view you can just draw a path and you know basically make shapes pretty quickly pretty awesome but we're not touching on that today but just to show you that's what it is so but yeah back to your cube we're just going to get this thing looking like a normal scene just to start so I'm going to come into here and create a floor and so in here we have some floor sky environment foreground background a stage which is pretty awesome but we're not going to touch on that physical sky uh, basically it has physical sky settings for when you're rendering um, it actually acts like the real physical sky um, again all other tutorials but we're going to stick with just a floor for right now so create a floor and that's going to zero out the coordinates of the floor in this scene. So right now our cube is not on the floor. So we're going to come in here and we're going to grab our object mode. So when we have this selected and have our move tool selected, we can move this object. Uh, if you have this selected and you click out here, it's going to only allow you to scale. So you got to always make sure that if you want to move your tool, click and move tool. There's another shortcut. E is your shortcut for the move tool. Uh, R is for rotate. And T, that's right, T is for uh, scale. I don't really use those hotkeys as much as uh, some do. Um, a lot of times I just come up here and click. For some reason, it's easier for me. <clears throat> but that doesn't mean you won't love using them. So if you can see here, this blue line is pretty much in indicating the zero uh, y value in this scene. It's exactly where this uh, floor is sitting. You can see the center point is right on that line. So I'm going to grab this cube, pull it up, hold down shift so it kind of snaps, and it's not going to work perfectly, but there are other plugins that you can get to do this, so I apologize, but we're just going to sit this down roughly and go from there. That's, again, all other tutorials. This software is amazing. There's a lot to it, and uh, it, it can get confusing, but again, it's super easy to learn once you get the general gist of this interface. I mean, yeah, it's easy. So right now, again, this is our object panel. Here, I'm going to select an object. This is our attribute panel, which shows you the attributes for this object, what you have selected. There's our floor. Changes. There's our cube. Changes. We're going to go to our floor. We're going to create... Uh, here, here's another really good thing for uh, beginners just to get some eye candy out there so uh, you see how powerful this can be. If you, if you go to Window, go down and select Content Browser, you're going to get this incredible built-in library of... Sorry, there's a bunch of other stuff in here because of uh, things that I use, but when you first open, this is going to look like this. So if you open your presets... And in S22, I've already been in there and, and looked around, and it's a little different, but basically the same gist. Open up your presets and start digging around and looking for libraries. So coming in here, let's just go down here to something like Visualize. You have materials in here. You can come in to Visualize, and let's say 
here you can just click on these it'll show you uh, the previews for them over here as you click on them for our floor let's just do like a um, how about wood let's just do some wood wood always looks uh, sexy so we're gonna throw a wood floor parquet in here I'm gonna grab the, te the material or the texture in the materials manager I'm gonna drag it up here to the floor and apply it and there we now have a floor so last thing so I don't again make this run a half an hour come over here and here are your lights so if you click on that once you're gonna create a light and you can see it's interacting XYZ coordinates come up here and position it somewhere here you can come in here and kind of get a better sense again I'm using two to back up here two to back up holding down two and moving my mouse left to right holding down two here zooming out getting a better uh... okay another uh, really helpful tip if you are in any viewport really but especially here uh, I do this a lot um, if you have your cube selected or any object for that matter select that object you can hover over this viewport all you have to do is be over over top of it um, hover over your viewport and hit the S key and it's going to center whatever you have selected so hovering S here, let's go to the floor and I'm gonna hover S so now the floor it's centered well the floor doesn't have any boundaries because it kinda goes into infinity so that's kind of a bad example but back to the cube S and it's that easy to center up Again, holding down two, I'm just gonna click and drag to back it out, back it out, back it out. And now I have my light here, and you can grab here is your, <clears throat> your Z and X coordinates that you can move your light. You're gonna see it moving in the perspective view over here, and it labels them right here in perspective, top, front, and right. You can change these actually. So if you come into display, I'm sorry, cameras, right here you have your options. So right now we're on right, we could go to left. I prefer to be on right because I'm used to it being on right, but you can full flexibility how you want to view these scenes. So in your light, you can come in here and just turn this on to area. Sorry, not area. Let's just go back to Omni. Uh, really quick tip, if uh, you want cooler from the start I mean this is again getting a little more advanced but if you go into details here and just change this fall off to inverse physical physically accurate you're gonna get a fall off range that makes it dimmer as it gets to the outside so you can scale this up and down and you're gonna see how it's affecting the scene <clears throat> the light I'm gonna come in here to general and assign it to cast a shadow um, area is more like real, real world shadows um, I like so soft shadows a lot it depends on what you're trying to do um, I'm just gonna turn soft shadows on for now um, and you're not seeing them in a viewport here because under options you actually have to come in here and enable shadows so if you turn shadows on and I think that wood texture is kind of jacking me up so I'm gonna take that off for a second the wood, the wood uh, texture has a, a reflective quality to it that I think it's uh, stopping my shadow from hitting it. So when you move this around, you can see the interactiveness to the light and see where your shadow is going to be, basically. And sometimes, depending on your machine, if you have an older machine, it may not be this responsive. I'm not sure. It depends. It all depends. Um, Cinema 40 does a pretty good job. Even um, my, uh, I have a MacBook Pro from 2012 that I still use. Um, right now I'm on an iMac Pro, but uh, yeah, my 2012 MacBook Pro still does incredible with it, so um, super responsive. So yeah, here's your light. I'm going to hold down Control and grab this, and if you do that to any object and you drag, it's going to create a duplicate. So now we have a duplicate of the light. If I wanted to do that with the cube, I can hold down Control and drag. Now we have two cubes. Slide this over here. Center the scene up by holding one and moving things back to the center. Getting an interesting angle. If you come up here, here's your cameras. I'm gonna create a camera. And this is a very basic setup here. This box here, if you activate it, it means you're looking out of the camera. So let's move 
no, actually, let's not look. I like that angle. So let's come out here like we're working. Let's go back to our perspective view by clicking the box in the corner, holding down two to back up a little bit. Right there is our camera. So I'm hitting one. Now I'm hitting two and clicking to rotate, hitting one and holding down and clicking to move, rotate. You get the idea. It becomes really fun to navigate around the screen when you start to get down the one, two, three. Uh, I know some people are kind of resistant to it, and I don't think I could work without it. It's kind of addicting to start flying around these scenes, you know, with all that kind of control whenever you're holding down one, two, and three. Zooming in and out, zooming, moving, rotating, zooming. Yeah, you get the idea. Anyway, so we're looking out of the default camera right now, which is just kind of like no camera. Um, we have a created camera in here of that uh, shot that we had earlier. If you activate this, it's going to take us back to that. If you uncheck this, it takes you back out to your default. So yeah, we're going to go into the camera. And now we have this weird little scene with these white boxes or blue boxes with white windows or whatever. So if you wanted to get a final render to see what you just built for the first time, and I'm going to wrap this up really quick because it's already getting more detailed than I wanted it to. Um, click on this button right here is your render settings. Come in here, your output. It's going to ask you what resolution you want to output. If you lock the aspect ratio, I'm going to go 1920 by 1080. By locking it, it'll automatically fill in the second field. 1920 by 1080. And then come down here to save. I'm going to change the format that I want this to be saved to, to a JPEG. No, no, no I always do PNGs, that's a lie. So. Um, I'm going to do a PNG, and I'm just going to call this test. You know what, let's go in here. If you click the three dots here, if you click these three dots, honestly, this across the board, this goes uh, a lot of menus over here in your attribute manager. You're going to see this if you're assigning a texture, uh, any anything like that. You see these three dots, it's going to ask you to reference a file out on your machine somewhere. Um, click these three dots, and I, this is actually asking me to specify, a, I'm sorry, a save, save as location. So I'm just going to save to the desktop. And I'm going to call this test one. Done. And another wow, cool factor if you wanted to really get into it. Again, I'm taking you past just the beginner tutorial, but if you go to effect and add ambient occlusion to this, it's just going to make your shadows look cooler. It's going to make them look a lot more detailed. There's a lot more bounces going on in the scene for the render. So anyway, another tutorial. Uh, close that window, and you can come out here and just click this button, and it's going to initiate your render. So now you have a 1920 by 1080 render of the scene that we just created with a floor, and I deleted the wood texture. Let's actually put that back on. I'm going to put this wood texture back up here by dragging it to the floor and dropping. Here's our scene. Wood floor, blue and white boxes. Render settings 1920 by 1080, saving as to the desktop. We added two lights that have a fall off from the center point. And I'm gonna click render. Now I'm gonna overwrite the other one, yes. And there we go. Our lights aren't very intense in this scene, so I could always come up here and highlight both of them and, you know, in another easier way. Let me close this. I'm going to come out of the camera, go back to the top view, back this up. If you click this in any of these windows, it's going to make it full screen. So your viewport will. I'm going to grab that light and just make it bigger. And I'm going to grab this light and just grab these little points here and make it bigger and smaller, whatever you want. And you know what, maybe I'll move this out here a little bit. Let me see all four viewports. I'm gonna drag this out a little bit. Grab this light. Grab just move this out a little bit. And you can also just grab these to go in one direction. That helps a lot too. Okay, so let's pull this up and do a render. I'm gonna overwrite that one too. Uh, I'm not on my camera. Again, what we're seeing here is activating my camera to go back into it and then hitting render again. I'm going to overwrite that again. And there we have it. You have the wood floor, which it's kind of dark in this scene, but you get the general idea of messing with the lights and 
messing with the textures and all that good stuff. So yeah, fun stuff going into here. Content browser, look through your materials. There's some really cool stuff in here. Liquid, leather, concrete, bricks, asphalt, stone, tiles, walls, wood, leather. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff in here. Um, if you look around in here, you can get lost in here, honestly, because there's 3D objects. Let's just fly this open. Appliances, bath, bedrooms. I mean, oh, there, it's crazy the amount of stuff that you can find in here. But just playing around. Let me close this. Just playing around. Come in, create some create some objects, some parametric objects, and play with them. Um, if you wanted to uh, get crazy, and you make a parametric object, remember to uh, adjust your segments if you want more geometry. Uh, come over here, make it editable with the Make It Editable button, which is hotkey C, and you can come into the Polygon tool, stretch and push, and all that good stuff, and add a light from your light menu in here. In that light, if you want a little flexibility, go to details, make it inverse, square, physically accurate, and then scale it all you want. And your floor is right here. Skies, play with all that stuff. And don't forget to make a camera and keep this checked once you get your shot lined up. And you know what, we're just cutting it off for here because I've already been rambling too much in too many different areas. And yeah, if you guys have any questions about anything, this is my first tutorial. Um, I just wanted to get one out the door so I could just say I got one out the door, honestly. Um, I w I'm gonna start uh, homing in on more specific tutorials, uh, more specific directions and workflows and yeah, getting into the tools and more complicated features. and. But I'm looking to have a whole playlist for uh, beginner tutorials. So please, anybody, um, if you like this video, like and subscribe. Um, comment below if you have something that you are a beginner and do you have another 3D software that you're trying to learn. You don't like Cinema 4D for any reason or there you do like Cinema but it's confusing and there's any tools that you want me to, to kind of go over, general go over, uh, you know, not too crazy for a beginner tutorial or maybe something more advanced that you want me to touch on. Um, either way, I'm going to be loading up on tutorials over the next uh, few weeks and starting to get on a schedule as I get a little more comfortable with, uh, yeah, this uh, tutorial workflow. So yeah, uh, happy to be on YouTube. Good to see you guys. Thanks for uh, watching and uh, yeah, everybody uh, stay safe and I'll see you soon. Bye.